my beautiful wife, Sarah Alexander, and I live in our fourth and our final home. And each of the houses that we bought were fixer uppers, whether they were owned by a cat lady or they were foreclosures or it was a rental situation or like this last case, these folks were super sharp, had good jobs, but also had some mental health conditions in which they refused to take care of their houses. And by the way, when I say my beautiful wife, I know everybody feels like they married up. I know for a fact that I did. That's not to brag because I'm not Sarah. And by the way, men, we live in a golden age of wives. Not only do they do a lot of or all of the cooking and cleaning, errand running, figuring out when homeworkers do, they work full time. And then they go to burn boot camp, go to see the nurse, esthetician, nip, tuck, pluck, all the things. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, dude, it was not that way. Moms were full of astro vans, mom jeans, and bowl haircuts. So boom, we're lucky. Anyways, back to the houses. This last house we built or we took over in the fall of 2018 wasn't, I mean, it's a great house, great layout, beautiful neighborhood, but they had let the landscaping grow completely up. And you know, this house is, you can see it's got great bones, but for those of you in the Southeast here, the walls are seafoam green, like 30A PCB green. And you know, they got these odd amenities here where they just put up a, a shelf in the middle of nowhere, countertops that don't match anything else, a completely unfinished bonus room. It just didn't show well. And me and Sarah were able to take advantage of that. What we have did, did for all four houses, and we are not chipping Joanna Gaines. We can't hammer a nail straight or, or do much of anything, but we can plan. And she's an accountant by nature. She plans nonstop all the time for everything. She loves a color-coded spreadsheet like, you know, most people love their children. For us, it was about finding what you could do over a period of time. So this last house, when we got it, the planning stage looked like how much of a budget do we have? What all items need to be updated? What can we do? What can we not do? Who else can we get involved? Put <clears throat> the budget to the timeline and figure it out in what order you had to do everything. And for any of you that ever remodeled a house, carpet doesn't go first, right? Paint doesn't go first. You do the big things first. If it's the roof, the gutters, the HVAC, the windows, those big things go first. And then you start coming in let's say with the kitchen or the bathroom remodel and you figure out who else can do it and how much money you have and what you can or can't buy at Lowe's or what you do splurge on. Then you start working on the final objects, the, the paint, the carpet. I say the carpet for a lot of you, hardwood or anything else. And it has to fit on a timeline and it has to fit on a budget. One of the houses that we ended up flipping, so to speak, or we ended up moving into, we had to get on a very tight timeline because we lived with the in-laws for six months. And for any of you that have ever lived with in-laws, six months, that's the max. All of the time that we spent planning was necessary. We spent more time planning for a house that we would move into, even though it was a necessary thing for a big investment than a lot of people do for either their startup or their existing business and ongoing. And it's mind boggling to me, especially somebody that does business coaching on a consistent basis. For those of you that are doing a startup, First, don't quit your job yet. By the way, got a book coming out on how to start a business while working full time. Don't quit your job yet. Or if you're in that process, create your budget first. How much cash do I need to make in order to keep the lights on, the family fed, and you know, keep the mortgage company happy? Do that budget first. Second, figure out all of the steps you have to do to market your business and how much time you have and how much money you're going to invest. And then figure out who or what's going to do some of the actions for those of you that have a business, which is pretty much all of you, a lot of you spend five minutes at the beginning of each week, planning your week out. You've got a calendar in front of you, identify your goal. What is your one short term goal you have for that week? Hopefully it should be a part of a larger term goal. Block out time on your calendar, treat it like a doctor's appointment. Don't let anything else interfere with it and make sure it gets done. Usually first thing in the mornings when you have most of your energy, don't let email, don't let a random meeting or somebody beating on your door stop you from doing it. Find the short-term goal, write down the big task and schedule it, color code it if necessary in order to keep anybody from blocking out that time. Cause you know, you know, green means money for you. Spend five minutes at the beginning of each week planning and it'll make all the difference in the world. As for me and my beautiful wife, 
this last house is our last house, or at least it is for now. And hope that you got something from it.